Okay. Um, welcome to everyone. So welcome to you in person, but also welcome to all of you in Zoom. My name is Julian Lee, and I'm the Sustainability Education Officer here. And Steve Batley from the Sydney Organic Garden is our landscape architect and permaculture expert. This is session one of um, Growing Big and Small Spaces, which is going to be all about how to maximise food production in limited amount of space, using permaculture principles and more. Um, we're here at the Ramwick Sustainability Club, uh, which is on Gadigal and Digital land. So I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging, and acknowledge any Indigenous participants. Um, I will hand over to you. <laughs> this, is, this is going to be great. So, so for you on Zoom, you're able to come each week. The people who are here, there's 10 face-to-face -face people that are coming for the whole 10 weeks. It has been designed for you on Zoom to be able to come in and out, but it's far better if you come for the whole series. And we're going to try, it's going to be as interactive as possible for you. And we'd like it that you actually be on the site. Um, if you want to work on it, apply what you're learning to in your own place. So, today you'll be going out side perhaps even um, to think about some of the side analysis we will be going to do later on. So and if you stay with us for the whole 10 weeks at the end you will have an amazing design to put into practice in your day. Yep. Okay. <laughs> of course. Thanks Julian. Uh, yeah welcome I'm, my name's Steve um, and Look, this, the next 10 weeks is all about, like Julian said, as if you've only got a big garden, you've only got a small space and you want to grow food. Uh, hopefully at the end of this 10 weeks, we'll have some, we'll have some, uh, some tips and tricks and some ideas and a really good grounding on how you can actually do that. So uh, before, we, before we start, I'll just give you the rundown of, of the, the week by week. So uh, today, uh, we'll be looking at this thing called permaculture. So you may or may not have heard of permaculture. Uh, it doesn't matter. We're going to explore you know, what, it, what is it, how does it work, what does it mean. Uh, and we're going to start the design process today doing a thing called uh, site analysis. So observing part of, of permaculture. Next week, uh, a couple of permaculture tools, uh, sector analysis and zone planning. Um, is a, the way you can start analyzing the site and doing some more, more an analysis and design. Uh, week three, composting and worm farming. So really one of those very useful skills to have. Uh, week four, we're looking at plants and soil and the relationship between plants and soil. So, um, week four, week five, we'll be doing some seed planting some seeds and taking some cuttings. So a very useful skill if you want to grow your own food. Uh, week six, uh, transplanting and planting out. So we're thinking about how you lay out your garden, the different types of plants, how to actually plant things, um, and some strategies and some ideas around how you can maximise your um, your yield from from the way that you plant your garden. Uh, week seven, we're looking at water. So how do you uh, capture and, and save water in your even in your small space, and how do you use it to, to its greatest effect? Uh, week eight. Wow, this is going to be a long course, huh? <laughs> right. uh, vertical gardens, and uh, we'll, we'll have a look at a thing called aquaponics as well, which is about fish and veggies growing in a system. Week nine, we'll, we'll have a we'll explore different containers and different things that you can grow um, plants in, and uh, how to how to plant it out and have a look after your plants. And also um, microgreens, so really small scale. How do you grow things on the windowsill so that sprout from the little plants that grow? Uh, and then in the last week, we'll be looking at pest management. So how do you actually get to the point where you get to eat some of the food that you're wanting to grow and all the other critters and caterpillars and things don't eat it all for you? So that's our, that's the last week. So it's quite a, quite a uh, high energy. Um, really comprehensive, so hopefully you'll be able to kind of stick it out with us. And uh, each week we're building on what we learned the week before uh, to get you to to a point where you're really comfortable growing food using permaculture. Um, Julia might be able to facilitate the zoomers in this part of the part of the process, but I thought it's really helpful for me and for us to kind of pitch um, for, for what you guys are, are interested in and what you want to get out of. Uh, being mindful that we've only got a short period of time right now, but maybe by chat, or yeah, maybe by chat, if you're in 
Zoom. Um, just maybe why why you're here? Why are you interested in this this thing that we're offering around meditation, sutra, meditation? So you guys can call out. Right. And, and Graham, would you like to say what it is that you, you're hoping to get out of this? I didn't hear any of the other bits. Okay. Yeah. So I, okay. Well, I have to get everyone to speak a bit louder. Um, so I'll, I'll just read out a couple here. Rommel says increased knowledge and skills to grow food in backyard and get some practical tips on permaculture concepts. Sebastian says, interested in learning about permaculture principles and tools to grow veggies, initially on a balcony and then in a bigger veggie patch. Stephen's saying, hoping to learn more about my own plants and veggies in a sustainable way. Frances says, uh, she's on Gadigal land and is interested in planting vegetables and native plants in a small courtyard garden while thinking of the environment we live in and encourage the other creatures living in my area to come and visit and share like the bees, birds, butterflies, spiders, and other insects. You can tell she's been to gardening on the wild side. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, so is there anybody else that might like to um, say why they're here? Graham, Christina, Jean, Alsa <laughs> Christina says uh, she lives in an apartment and has recently started growing some vegetables and interested to learn more. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, Jean, Jean and, and, I, and I have a similar, have a similar, similar action. I have a balcony, have a, balcony also a plot in a community garden, so i um, keen to grow as much as I can. Excellent. Thanks, Jean. Last chance for anyone else on Zoom? Okay, now keep in mind this, this is interactive, so we do love to have you contribute on Zoom. Graham says, small garden, interested in hydroponics. Alex says, hoping to learn this worldview where you see things in harmony, uh, in harmony, nature and people. 
Cool, that's a perfect segue. Thank you for that comment. So we're going to um, explore permaculture now. So um, we'll spend about 15 or 20 minutes fleshing out what is permaculture, what, 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 what's this all about, and then we'll get onto one of the tools of permaculture on the end of the site analysis. So, so let's get into it. A few of you guys have mentioned, may have heard of permaculture or seen it or seen it in action or heard stories about it. What, um, if you were to describe to somebody permaculture is dot 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 what would you what would you say the great thing about permaculture too there's no right and wrong so don't feel that you there is one right answer because there isn't there's a million right answers so what's your experience there's a mayor in the food forest And feel free to yell out on Zoom. <laughs> and for you guys, you know, if you can, speak up and speak to yourself. Rotating crops. Uh, companion planting. Working with the landscape and the, and the local environment. Um, Working with the landscape, harmonious. Natural as well, like especially with best management. Natural. Come on, Zoomers, we want to hear from you guys. <laughs> out loud, Sebastian. Help me out. Say it out loud. Um, yeah, to develop systems that are self-sustainable and to um, optimize the, um, the use of the energy and reduce waste. Can you guys see?
Yeah, yeah, we're done. Yep, yep going once. <laughs> <laughs> going twice. All right, so that, that's, um, yeah, cool. So some really interesting things going on there. Um, so where are we getting to with this? So permaculture. Uh, there's a word that's not up there. Well, we've kind of, kind of hitting on it a little bit. Biodiversity systems, nature, working with the environment. I think it's all of those things. Um, and one thing that we haven't put down here is the word uh, design. So permaculture is a lot of stuff. It's all of this. One of the, I guess one of the key things about permaculture is it's about design. So it's about designing systems that work with nature. So designing natural systems that are productive and that allow humans to, to live, you know, systems that we, we need to live uh, using nature rather than working against nature. And there's probably a million definitions that are better, but that's a, probably the one to start off with. So, um, so I'll just say a little bit about permaculture, how it came about. So it was a couple of guys, one called Dave Holmgren, and one called Bill Mollison, who were in the 70s down in Tasmania. Um, uh, David Holmgren uh, was studying at university at the time, and Bill Mollison, I think, was a lecturer. I don't know if that was their connection, but certainly they came together. Uh, Bill was a bit of a mentor to David, who was learning and really interested in, in ecology, so ecosystems, so nature, how does nature work, the study, the study of nature. Um, it was around a time in history where there was, I think there was an oil crisis or something, so there was a, a bit of turmoil going on in the world and people were questioning how we're, how we're doing things. Um, and David and Bill were really interested in, in they were looking at our, our agricultural system and how that provided food for everybody and how it really um, was based on a system that was not in their eyes sustainable in the long term. It was really high energy use. It was problematic on a lot of levels and that's still the case unfortunately but they they came up with this idea um, that sat somewhere between ecology and agriculture and design, landscape design. So permaculture kind of sits right in that nice triangle. So, so that it's, it's about designing landscapes that are productive and agriculturally productive based around uh, natural ecology. So as an idea, fantastic. You know, really, really cool. And, and I think you guys are also here. Um, and hopefully over the next few weeks, we'll, we'll kind of see how that, what that actually means. But um, the really, I think the really brilliant thing that they, they did was then take that idea and build a framework around it that allowed people like us to access that, um, that thinking and that way of doing something. So permaculture is essentially a set of principles or a set of, of uh, not rules, but principles that will do that you can that you can draw on when you're thinking about creating any system. It could be it could be a garden, it could be a farm, it could be a community, it could be a city, it could be your life, it could be whatever. So, so it's a framework that you can use to make design to design a, a sustainable or a regenerative system. Um, and around the corner we have some some of the principles stuck up. So we'll go around there and we'll have a bit of a look. Right, so uh, permaculture has uh, at its core three ethics. So these are the things that kind of drive the can you can use to, to, to kind of judge your decisions against. And these are the, the ethics here: so care, of, care of the earth, care of people, and share what's spare. Um, how do you think care of the earth could be a good kind of uh, base to to base yourself on when you're when you're living. 
makes sense. <laughs> uh, has anyone seen an example of carabia? Talking about non non fertilizing or uh, I mean using not using chemicals. Right? Yeah, not using chemicals. That's a that's a good one. Yeah. Composting. Composting. Yeah. There's heaps of things that we can we can put under the category of caring for the earth. What about caring for people? Has anyone heard of, seen or lived an example of caring for people? Yeah, there you go. So COVID uh, and the way in Australia, at least our government has provided money for people to, to, so to support them during a really tough time of COVID. Who would have thought that um, our Prime Minister was a permaculturist? How good is that? Um, so yeah, it's about looking after each other. It's about looking after your community and other people. Now, what about this one? Has anyone seen an example of share what's fair or there's, there's other words that you could use for it? But, um, distributing surplus is another way. Yeah, so Oz Harvests is a great example of sharing what's fair. There's leftover food, so collect it and share it with other people. It could be, you know, you might have chickens in your backyard and you can't possibly eat as many eggs as they're producing, so you give them to your neighbours. It can be something as simple as that. So it's kind of the opposite of kind of hoarding and trying to keep everything to yourself. And you know, um, It's all about me. It's more about sharing and, and sort of the sort of greater good. Is Air Airbnb sharing what's fair? <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Why not? Nice <laughs> surfing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You got a spare house, yeah. and you can. It's quite sharing. It's, 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 yeah. There's a transaction there. But yeah, sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, I guess a whole whole another house doesn't need to be built. Yeah. 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 That's right. I even call on sharing. You know, sharing the skills. Yeah. Yeah. Volunteering. I'll be repeating it. Um. For example, Friday mornings here at uh, Randwick Community Centre, you can come and do some perma bee volunteering and learn and do some gardening at the same time. So there's, there's this kind of underpinning, this grounding in these ethics that permaculturists try and try and sort of filter things through um, as, a, as a basis. And then the really exciting thing for me, at least about permaculture, is you've got all these uh, principles. And, and the great thing about these principles um, is that they all, they're things that you can call on and they enable you to design systems that have the resilience and the, the properties of natural systems. So, um, yeah, I don't know, is that, is that kind of hard to, I don't know, I find it really hard to kind of wrap my head <laughs> around this and get it there. But, I don't know, let's pick one. So, for example, one of my faves is this one, use and value diversity. Okay, so whenever I'm designing something um, or even managing a garden, for example, um, if you come to a point where you've got to decide, you know, what uh, composting, whenever you, if you've got a compost bin and you've got a bunch of stuff and you're not sure whether you should put it into the compost bin, you can say, okay, diversity is a key principle of permaculture of, of most natural systems. As long as you've got diversity in your compost bin, then you're probably going to be okay. All right, so you wouldn't just put one, you know, you wouldn't fill your compost bin just with straw because there's no diversity in that. So you can use this principle for diversity. I mean, it also applies to your diet, it applies to so many things. Um, so that's just an example of how, of how the principles for people, that's right, you know. Um, diverse society is generally a healthy society. Um, so yeah, all these principles, observe and interact is one thing that will be one of the principles that we will be using today. Um, and it's a key in, in permaculture design and permaculture uh, when managing permacultures is we're always observing and watching what's going on and then adjusting and, and responding accordingly. Um, so don't worry if, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of principles. If you go to different places, There'll be different principles. Um, you know, David Holmgren's principles are slightly different to some of um, 
Bill Mollison's principles, could be different to some other people's principles, but they're all really useful to, for using when you're creating, creating a permaculture. And each week over the next 10 weeks, we'll be looking at some of the, a different one of these principles and applying it to your balcony garden. So hopefully you'll get a feel for how it works and, and how you can incorporate these to create a better outcome and more productivity uh, and a more resilient uh, balcony garden that gives you more food. Um, yeah, so that's, that's permaculture. <laughs> and maybe Julian will just give me one second to go get my notes. Excuse me. I'll just show you on Zoom the other, the other ones over here that you might not have seen. We had to suddenly move location because it started to rain. Yeah. <laughs> this robe. Um, so we just observed that it got quite hot, so we, we uh, interacted by... So I just want to show you a few books. So Bill, Bill Mollison and um, David Holmgren produced the uh, Introduction to Permaculture way back in the day. Um, so that was kind of the beginning. And that has led to a lot of different... This is Bill Mollison's Permaculture Designer's Manual. So if you're really uh, mad keen about this stuff, uh, you know, it's not something you'd probably sit down to read in an afternoon, but it's a really good, good resource. Uh, David Holmgren, one of his more recent books, uh, jam-packed with information, is one of his most full-on, really smart guys. Um, you know, there's lots of magazines and um, uh, other publications around permaculture now. There's so many books and so much information online. So this, is, um, one, this is a really good one, one that I found really useful when I was starting out. Uh, Earth User's Guide to Permaculture by Rosemary Morrow. Um, it just made it really easy to understand and follow. Um, so that's one to check out. Um, yeah, there's another, I actually read this one, but I found it in the bookshelf. Um, so yeah, lots of, lots of information around permaculture now. And it's gone from you know, a couple of guys in Tasmania uh, to a global phenomenon really and permaculture is just absolutely booming at the moment I think it's even in the last five years it seems to be coming getting much more traction and becoming much more mainstream um, so yeah and that's because it's such a brilliant solution so solution focused so smart such a good thing to apply to, to lots of different scenarios um, does anyone have any questions about permaculture that's a really fast kind of summary No one on Zoom? No. All right, so normally we'd sit down and kind of flesh it out a bit more, but that's, we'll, we'll keep talking about it over the next 10 weeks. So one of the, uh, one of the design tools that we can use when we're starting to create your balcony garden, so back to, back to your garden. Um, and one of the things about permaculture is that we're, we're working with nature, we're working with uh, the environment, we're working with what's going on right here, right now in your space that you have. So it's really important before you do anything to actually get a feel for what is going on in your location. Um, I think Lisa, was it Lisa? Yeah. Lisa mentioned her balcony is very shady, so she doesn't have a lot of sun, so how do that? So that's a really important observation because there's no point sticking some lavender on a shady balcony, it's fairly obvious. So site analysis, reading the landscape, understanding what's going on in your garden is one of the key, the key things to do. So I thought we could spend the next five minutes doing a, a, a site block using observe and interact working with the permaculture principle of observation and interaction. Um, it's also a really nice opportunity just to uh, have some quiet time 
and just kind of relax and just immerse yourself in your surroundings for five minutes. So, so the guys who are here, we get to we get to spend a bit of time wandering around in our space and uh, just noticing things. Um, what I my for you guys at home, if you have a balcony or a space, if you're close to it right now, and you can actually go out there and spend the next five minutes um, out there just observing what's going on, please do. If not, just go outside anyway and just wander around and, and enjoy yourself. So, but what we want to do, so over the next five minutes, just um, try not to talk. Just try not to, uh, yeah, so, so don't talk to anyone. Just get in your own space and just feel what you feel so use your senses so listen um if you want to taste things that's fine a lot to eat here. um you know it's, what do you smell what do you notice what do you see what do you feel um and and then we'll regroup in five minutes but just see just have a discussion about what you what you notice okay so it's uh julia might be able to set some sort of clock 11 past two Eleven. All right, so we'll see you at 11 past. We'll, we'll, we'll kick off again. Five minutes from now, basically. We'll give you a view of the garden. So for you guys, feel free. We'll, we'll, we'll use the building as our, as our space for what you did. So if you want to stay with me. General location of the building, but feel free to walk around and yeah, just just notice what you notice, what you hear, what you see, what you see. Okay, so we're going to now for those on Facebook, I'm going to take you on a tour. <laughs> so, oops, going to take you on a tour with this. So this is the Ramwick Sustainability Hub and here we have um, all sorts of demonstration gardens. Over here we have um, where we've been based is our sustainable classroom which is passive solar design which means that in summer without using any energy it's cooler than your average home and in winter it's warmer than your average home. It's got a whole lot of clever design features to make that happen. And these design features, so when we're talking about permaculture, we um, can apply it not just to growing things, but also to building design. So I'm sure you can see the trees are really blowing around, so it's, it's quite windy. You can hear plenty of birds. So this is our food forest. Our food forest is different to um, a typical orchard. In a, in a, it's pretty visually obvious, the difference. Um, so we've got the tree layer, we've got the shrub layer, and we've got a ground cover layer. You can see there's lots of diversity. There's flowers, you can see butterflies and moths flying around. Things look really healthy. We don't use any fertilizers, chemicals, pesticides, weedicides at all in here. Just notice that some um, broad beans have come up on their own. Notice that there's a mixture of food plants flowering plants, wants to attract beneficial insects, pollinators. Things looking lovely. Lavender, big olive tree. So this site here, it's hard for you to see on zoom, but it's um, it's very sandy. So we have a lot of plants here that are well suited to a dry, sandy um, poor soil. This is a pomegranate.
And as soon as they come around the back of this pomegranate, it, it, it's quite sheltered, so not nearly as windy. This is the veggie garden side of things. We'll be spending quite a bit of time in here over the coming weeks. But I just wanted to show you here too, we've got examples of um, vertical gardens, which are really well suited to um, apartments. So you can put them up a wall. Just today during our permaculture gardening session this morning, which anyone's welcome to come to, just register on Eventbrite, look up uh, Permabee. This is an almond tree. There's an almond tree over there too and we have netted them. Lots more pomegranates, bananas, citrus, artichokes, lots and lots of citrus. We've got ice cream beans, clumping bamboo to provide wind shelter, sugar cane. And I just learned today about how you can nip the back off an nasturtium flower and suck the nectar out. That's quite, quite lovely. Here we have a whole avenue of olive trees. Later on, we're hoping to do a, um, a olive pickling workshop. Over there in the distance is our native habitat garden, and our winter program is just finished. It's all about how do you um, design a garden to provide good protection of habitat for native critters, and especially the smaller critters. Yeah. There we go. So apologies if you're on Facebook and you were wanting um, a bit of peace and quiet. <laughs> Steve on Zoom has actually said thanks for the tour. So. They got to see the vertical garden too and the veggie beds and see some of these principles in, you know, in, in action. Okay. So that was that was six minutes. Six minutes, yeah, apologies. Minutes. So uh, we'll ask everyone to come back in. Okay, did, um, we'll start with you Zoom guys, did, did anybody go outside and if you did, what did you notice? Did you notice anything that you, uh, when you went on your mosey? Christina. Uh, hello. Uh, what I saw, I felt today quite glary, not too windy. It's sunny. Well, it's kind of light on my balcony, but yeah, is that what you're after? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's kind of calm, it's a nice temperature, and there's lots of flowers. <laughs> yeah, it's a great time of year. Yes. Yeah. Stephen, you came on the tour with me. What did you notice? Um, I noticed that there was it's quite shady outside and uh, there was like nice layering happening with the trees and the shrubs and the, and the plants growing. So yeah, I found that interesting. Yeah, the layers, yeah. How about you guys? Yeah, so it's quite exposed around this building, particularly on, on this, this side. This is the exposed place. There's a lot of wind and sun, and then you'll be picking up the grass during already the spring. Yeah, so it's quite windy here, actually. It's interesting, Christina. Uh, Christina's comments about not, it's, it's really quite windy here. It's wind coming from the south, so the power of, of observation is different sites can be completely different on exactly the same day. But here it's really dry, yes, dry, and the grass is actually brown and crackly. Anyone else notice anything? Well, it's been a while since I did the tour. You can see the more bigger and more in the flower. Things generally look a lot better than they do. <laughs> Things are looking good. That's good. That's good. Flowering. Yeah. I've noticed that the plants are very protected. They are very close to the 
They're very close to each other. So, <laughs> there's a variety. Seems like they're helping each other. Yeah, I don't know if you guys heard that, but yeah, Ellen was saying the plants, a lot of the plants that we planted here are very quite close together, and there's lots of diversity, and they seem to be helping each other. Yeah. What about, was there any uh, any spots that you were com more comfortable in and any spots you were less comfortable in? Kind of get to that, do you feel that at all as you're walking around? Yes, that side's way more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, so the other side of the building is way more comfortable than where we are now. Maybe we'll, next week we'll go over there. We'll put you in the hot exposed side. <laughs> um, but yeah, really important obstacle. How could that be helpful? Do you think that, that observation? Probably more comfortable for plants too. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, what we're looking at, some of the key things you'd be, you'd be noticing and looking at is where, you know, where the warm spots are, where the cool spots are. Um, you know, the sun and the shade patterns. So, this observation that we're doing, particularly important in a small space, because often in a small space, you don't have a lot of options. You know, that's what you've got, and that's what you've got to live with. And often, small spaces will have buildings and fences and trees and walls and things. So. Um, you know, they're very variable from one, you know, two meters away from each other. It's quite a different feel, quite a different um, microclimate. So, one of the things that you, you would do if you're really interested in permaculture is wait for 12 months before you actually do anything. So, every day, go out there and observe, observe, observe. Why would you, why would you wait for 12 months, do you think, before you kind of make many big design decisions? Changes in the season, yeah. So, yeah, and changes in every day. And look, probably realistically, you should wait 10 years because each season is not the other one. But we won't do that because we're looking at So, but you, yeah, that's exactly right. So, in winter, it's a, you know, you might be in a certain spot, it's a very different to the middle of summer. Um, what's, yep? Oh, oh, I'm just feeling for myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so even things, you know, things that are outside of your control can, can change the, the local environment. Like a neighbor chopping down a tree. Suddenly you've got all the sun in the world, so you, 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 your design might change accordingly. So, um, we'll just quickly talk about uh, one of the probably the key things to look for um, is north. Who knows how you find where north is? Google. Google. On your phone. It's so easy these days. It used to be a challenge, you know. It's like, just look it up. <laughs> so yeah, Google, Google Earth is great because that'll align you to north. Uh, your phone has a compass. What if you don't have technology? Yeah, observe where the sun rises and sets. So where, if we're standing here, where, where does the sun rise and set? Oh, where does it rise? Yeah, over that way, which is... Uh, East, north is that way. So Sydney, in Sydney, it's quite, you know, the beach is that way, so north is that way. Now, why is, did, did I ask why is that important? How does that help you, knowing where north is? Because the sun will be, you know, in different places in different parts of the day, and the days when it's colder will be stronger or weaker. Yep. So not both ones will be able to survive. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So it starts to give you a feel for where the hot, the hot bits are, and the cool bits, and the shade, and also seasonally. So in winter, let's say we're standing here in the middle of the day, um, in summer, twelve o'clock. Where would the sun be? Pretty much, kind of, almost straight up. A little bit to the north, but straight up. So it's going to be up there. What about if we're here in the middle of the winter, the shortest day of the year in the day? Yeah, it's actually quite lower down in the sky. So it's about 30 degrees. So it's a very different uh, uh, location. And what does that affect in terms of on the ground and your plants that are growing? Yeah, it's a less intense sun. 
Yeah, the sh- shadows are longer. So, you know, if you're on the, yeah, if you're in a certain, on the south side of a building, say, in summer, you might still be getting sun. In winter, you get it, you're getting none. So it changes like that throughout the year. So knowing where north is, where the sun patterns are, where the, you know, how that affects your your small space, really, really important to your, to your design. You know, you might have a wall which gets sunny all year, all the time. Uh, there's an opportunity. Right? You might have no sun on the ground whatsoever. You may, you know, you know. So you're looking for those little opportunities um, to respond to your local environment. Another key one is is uh, is the wind. So wind can have a massive impact on your plants and how well they grow. Um, so. Yeah, so observing where the strong winds are coming from all year, again, is really helpful for when you start to design your space. So that's observing and interacting. And there's lots more, so but that'll do. So they're the main, the main things to look out for. So maybe between now and next week, uh, if, you, if you would like to really make the most of this course, during the week, go to your space and start observing everything. And, and write it write down your observations or just notice things that are going on. So where are the warm bits? Where's the sun in the afternoon? Where's the sun in the morning? As much as you can notice, take, take, just take, take note of it, where the strong winds are. And other things like, uh, even things like views, you know, if you've got neighbors looking in that you don't necessarily want to be looking in, maybe there's, that's worth noticing as well. Noise, misting animals, anything that you notice. Uh, note it because it will inform your design that's kind of side and axis any questions around that on zoom or or you guys live here zoomers That's, that's today. <laughs> that's our first hour. Um, so we've got about 10 minutes till it's about 20 past two. Um, so what we'll do right now is, is we'll get, um, we'll ask the people on Zoom, if you wouldn't mind, uh, we'll, Julian will call you up uh, one at a time. I know it's not nice to be put on the spot, but it's very useful for everybody involved. Um, and we'll do it with these guys as well. Um, if you could just share one thing that that you uh, that you remember from, from the last hour. So, um, Alex, would you mind starting? So I'll do it uh, alphabetical. Alex followed by Christina. And it doesn't matter what it is; just anything that you that you remember. Remember from sorry, from just from today, from this work, from this workshop. From the, it just um, helps everyone to remember stuff. Um, I remember the sort of Venn diagram you formed with your hands. Um, that permaculture is right in the smack in the middle of um, technology design and oh my god, I thought forgot the third one. <laughs> <laughs> technology design and agriculture. Yeah, so not technology but ecology. So ecology. Okay, thank you. And design and agriculture. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Awesome. All right, Christina, followed by Francis. So, what I remember is the most obvious thing at the end now that you go out and you observe. You know, currently we're always so pressed to produce and just kind of pump things out. And I really like the concept of observing and taking things in and then, you know, moving forward. So, yeah, that's what I'm going to remember. Cool. Thank you. Graham followed by Jean. Hey Graham. We might go skip to Jean. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, observing and design. I really want to have the. I have plenty of plants on my balcony at the moment, and I want to be able to fit more in. So design is going to be really important. In particular, a guava. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Lisa followed by Rommel. Rommel. Hey, Lisa. 
No, we won't go to Ramel. Now, Ramel, I met down at the White Street Food Forest last week. Hey, hey guys, how are you? Good. Uh, well, a good takeaway for me was um, the long and short shadows. I'd never really, you know, you, th you, you talk about, you know, you, we talk about sun exposure and you always think about how much sun you're getting, but I never really thought about shadows that, you know, buildings or structures or even other trees might, might have throughout the year as well. Like, so sometimes, you know, it, it may create a space that you thought was adequate, um, inadequate because you've got long shadows for, you know, a, a certain section of the year. So that was, that was really a good takeaway. Sebastian and Stephen. Yeah, um, so I think for me the takeaway is, um, I think Christina mentioned it already, is really take the time to observe and know your environment uh, before sort of rushing into um, putting things together. Um, you know, and take the time to, to see variations during the days and seasons. I think that's really, really important. Yeah, uh, something that I took away was uh, regarding the sun position. So I have a south facing balcony. So I just noticed that uh, right now, bits of it are receiving a little more sunlight. Um, so yeah, it'll be interesting to observe that more closely in the coming months. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And just in case, Graham or, or Lisa? No? Okay. All right, so thanks for that feedback. Um, so next week, we're, we're so what we what we just did was the start. Well, part of the design process. So there's a process that we can follow as a permaculture designer or as any designer really to get from where you are down to a to a design that you can then incorporate uh, and start to start to start to create. Um, and next week we'll be we'll be going a little bit further along the analysis path. So we'll be doing a thing called sector analysis, and another thing which is around design, I think zone plan. So so going along that design path, and also uh, also uh, da -da 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 -da. yeah, that's next week. So so we'll actually be um drawing a little, what we call a mud map of your space, so a really basic outline, and then starting to plot some, some more analysis onto your, onto your design. And that'll set you up really well um, moving forward to creating a permaculture design. In your space. Great. Well, um, you know, thank you for you, Steve. Um, but thank you for all of you in Zoom for coming. Really hope you come back next week and each week after that. I'll be sending you a um, email pretty shortly just for feedback because we love to hear from you so that we can make it better week to week. Um, but yeah, it'd be great to have you join us for the whole series. See you everyone. Thank you guys. See you. Wave. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Wave. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See you next week. Observe, observe.